Hey, Space Lab. Uh, this is Mike Tutts. I'm an experimental particle physicist at Columbia University, and I work at the Large Hadron Collider. And I'm here to answer your questions today. And the first one comes from uh, Space Guy 44, who asks, what does the Higgs boson have to do with the Big Bang? Well, if you go back to just after the Big Bang, so about one trillionth of a second after the Big Bang, before that, the Higgs field, it was so hot and dense in the universe that the Higgs field couldn't condense. After the Big Bang and the universe expanded, it started to get cooler. So at one point, at this one trillionth of a second after the Big Bang, the Higgs field condensed. And when the Higgs field condensed, suddenly all the elementary particles got mass. They finally got their mass. Before that, they were all massless. So it's really important because once the particles get their mass, that's what lets us build up the universe and that's why we're here to talk about it. The second question comes from 69 Chillin 69 who asks, in a spaceship going the speed of light, would you be able to walk to the front of it, making you go faster than the speed of light? I have to adjust your question a little bit. Because for a spaceship to travel at the speed of light, Einstein tells us that's impossible. First of all, you have to ask it, what reference frame are you actually looking at trying to ask this question? So what we need to do is I need to sit here. You need to be in this spaceship that's going almost at the speed of light. And then you start walking in the spaceship. And the question you're asking is, what do I measure about what you're doing? Well, I need to add those two velocities, the velocity of the spaceship to the velocity that you have. And what Einstein said, he gave us a formula. And the formula is not as simple as just adding the two numbers. It's a bit more complicated than that. And when you use it, you actually end up with a number that's going to say that you, in the spaceship, relative to me sitting here, are still traveling a little bit less than the speed of light. Faster than the spaceship itself, but still less than the speed of light. The question with the most thumbs up comes from Get What You Need, who asks, what is string theory? From a particle physicist's point of view, we only deal with the electromagnetic force, the weak force, and the strong force. And what we leave out is gravity. So we have to combine gravity, which is something that we think of normally as a big scale, with quantum mechanics at a very small scale. So we need something called quantum gravity. That's a really tough problem. And the best handle that we have on that now is something called string theory. And what string theory tells us is that the elementary particles aren't that. They aren't little points like we think they might be. But in fact, they're teeny weeny little strings. And that these strings vibrate. And it's the vibration of these strings that represents the different kinds of elementary particles. Now that sounds great, but the problem is that if you want to make that theory consistent so it actually works and gives sensible results when you try and do it, you end up with uh, saying that you need more than the three space dimensions that we have now. Now that's a pretty bizarre notion that there are more than three space dimensions. So in order to tell you where the point is, I have to give you more than three coordinates. But that's the price you pay for string theory. Thanks for watching. Leave your questions in the comments below, and we'll have an expert answering those questions next time. So this is Mike Tutts uh, signing off.